Last week, we tackled the elephant in the room. Did I actually time the OM606 correctly? And to that, I say probably. I don't know. But there's a lot more that's needed to get done before I can really save my hard work paid off. Now I need to put this top end back together so I can move on to other equally important parts of the build. So if you're in the middle of building your own 606, these little figures might come in handy. So first, lube up your bolts, run them down just until they're touching the block, and then it's 15 newton meters. Then once you've reached 15 newton meters across the entire head, it's 35 newton meters. And then last step of that first process is 90 degrees. Then you have to wait 10 minutes for the bolts to stretch out. Have a sandwich while you wait, because you're going to need your strength. Now, I've done this entire process with a digital torque wrench from Snap-on. Now, most people don't have access to these, so if you are a mechanic of your own and you have access to these, this by far is one of the best things I've ever used. But you can still do it with a regular torque wrench and a marker. You don't have to have super specialized tools, but they do help. The second pull for 90 degrees, I hit about 100 newton meters. You couldn't imagine how hard it is to do this on an engine stand that rolls. And if you aren't that strong, call some friends over and join together. It was pretty tough, especially with filming the whole thing. In the last episode, someone in the comments pointed out that there's a specific way to tighten down the cam journal bolts so that you don't break a cam. I didn't see the comment until after I made this video and I still didn't do it right. Needless to say, I didn't break anything, but it was definitely in the back of my mind. I've been pretty focused on the engine for a while now as it is one of the main things that's going to help this vehicle move. However, I do have the rest of the vehicle to contend with. All right, so. Even though I've got everything in now and tight, I'm still not gonna turn it over because I'm still waiting for a new one of these cam chain tensioners. I just don't wanna run the risk of jumping a tooth off the sprocket. Um, probably not up here, but definitely down here. So um, timing is set. Everything's good to go. Just need those new parts to come in. Now let's turn our focus and attention to So we got to stripping the front axle down to get ready for powder coating. I was curious to see the condition of the internals, mostly because I had never seen a diff lock mechanism before, but also how well the parts inside fared after 40 years of neglect. Surprisingly, it wasn't looking too bad, all things considered. How's it going, G fam? Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not terrible, but, uh, I want to show you something pretty cool. Now, anybody that is not familiar with a G-Wagon or W460, um, probably some of the newer ones as well, it's kind of a little cool feat of engineering here. This little cylinder, there's a lock that goes inside here, and it slides this back and forth inside that guy over there, inside the axle housing. Now, the cool thing about this is, see these little teeth right here? There's a corresponding gear that is splined on the inside and what this does is it locks into place right here and this is how the diff locks on a G-Wagon or at least a W460. This little thing has a lip and when it sits in there and it slides back and forth on the axle it locks into place when activated. It's a pretty cool little thing. And now it's off to powder coat. These are gonna look a lot better once they're done. We got our parts back from powder coating. We did our front trailing arms. We did our swivel housing and our axle housing. 
Now this is the axle housing of a W460 early style. Now reason why I'm specifying that is because inside here there's actually seals. So instead of it being on the outsides like you'd see on a normal G-Wagon, um, they're actually in here. Now they did away with that because they found that the seals weren't really holding up all that well. And I'm hoping that with the tricks that I'm going to use here, they might be able to hold up for a world trip. But maybe I'll be swapping out this front axle in the future. Who's to know what the rear one looks like as well? So we'll find out, I guess. Uh, we've got a lot, a lot of work to do. <laughs> Let's get started. Popping the bearing races on the pivot ball is as easy as taking a socket and a hammer to them. First time I attempted to remove them on the truck, I couldn't get very good access, mostly because I didn't know what I was doing, but with it up on my workbench, it made for a pretty easy go at it. During the powder coating process, one of the things that I was worried about was powder coat getting into places that it shouldn't. So I decided to leave the old races in the housing that way I knew that it wouldn't have to remove the powder coating out of where the bearings go and the coating would go right up to the new race protecting the area from corrosion. Another issue I was thinking about was the swivel ball wear. Unlike a Land Rover Defender, you can't replace them without replacing the whole axle. So I'm going to see how they hold up with them coated as well. Just a quick cleanup for some surface rust and we're good to go. These little caps go in to seal the kingpin bearings off from the rest of the internals. This helps to keep other debris out of them in the event the axle gets water, dirt, sand, or mud in them. Hopefully with everything installed correctly, that should never happen, but at least there's a few fail safes put in place from the factory. The old seals, as you could imagine, are pretty worse for wear. Luckily, there are some really great factory parts shops online to make this build go a lot smoother. Now some of these bearings that were inside the diff actually look pretty good still. I'm on the fence on whether or not I should reuse them, but I think for now, they spin just fine. I'm really excited to get this axle back together. After this is done, I can finally move the truck to the shop so I can get some body work done. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. At first, I thought it would just go in easy, and then I saw the reason why it wasn't just popping in. This little o-ring is actually standing in the way of my pinion going back in. So I need to replace the o-ring and try and get this thing back in now. Now it should go in easy, right? Well, here goes nothing. So here was my hungry thought process. I wanted to keep the bearing in place while the pinion shaft slides in, so I had the brilliant idea to pop the seal in to keep it bearing in. I'm sure you can see the flaws in doing it this way, but in my defense, it was just before dinner and I was working on an empty stomach. So at this point, I'm confused why my foolproof plan isn't working. Why is it not going in? Maybe it just needs more lubrication. I'm sure that's it. No, I'm getting a lot of resistance here. What the heck is going on? All right, well, don't do it this way. I made a mistake. 
I put the seal in first thinking it would retain this bearing in place and since I got the new seal on here I thought that I could just install it and the seal would keep the bearing in place. Well, I accidentally popped out, where's it at? There it is. I accidentally popped out the spring inside of it. So this seal is no good, which is a bummer. It took a little while to get here, but um, it's just a seal. I can fix the seal or, or replace the seal, I should say. But sucks I <laughs> stupidly thought I could put that in there. Hey, this is a learning experience for me too. So I think if I take the seal back out, I might be able to um, actually get this to go in all the way and, and use the new nut to tighten it up. So this was the old one that was in there and the new one has a star pattern, but I already tried it out. It, it fits on there nice. But uh, yeah, somebody had been in here before obviously. So to get this out, I had to um, use my press behind me because I didn't have this special tool that goes here um, that compresses the housing of this. So basically all I did was basically compress this piece here against the vise down there and it gave just enough pressure release that I could pull this out. And then um, as for this piece back here, you just push that out with the press as well. So. I'm sure there's a lot easier ways to do it, but with the limited um, tools that I have here, it's kind of uh, hit or miss. So I'm doing this the way that I can do it. I know that there's much better ways that I can do it. And if any of you out there have the tool for this that compresses that, let me know, because I'd like to buy one um, just to have, really. But. Um, Try not to get too frustrated here. Everything is kind of um, giving me a little bit of trouble today. So I'm just gonna try and take it easy. <laughs> Cause I don't wanna break anything else. I already destroyed a seal because uh, I put this in first and I should not have. So just gotta order another one of these. It's, it's all a learning experience. That's really all it is. So. Adam from the editing room here. This by far was one of the most frustrating experiences I've had. Well, I think that, um, well, I don't think I know. It was because I hadn't really eaten today and uh, I just decided that I was gonna do it quick before dinner. Um, again, not practicing what I preach. Take your time, do it right the first time. So I'm gonna invest in some manuals. And next time, I'll produce a lot better video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.